started here shall we let's uh let's go ahead and uh maybe uh you know we'll start the stream what do you think what say you i think it's a good day i think it's a good idea i got my tea i got everything i got i got it all let's let's shwamp shall we shabam hey everybody welcome i thought there was gonna be a little fade there but there wasn't it, it knew how I feel about transitions. It's true. How's it going, everybody? Ha! What's up? My goodness. I'm so glad you're here. Hey, thanks for showing up to the, this little impromptu stream here. I, uh, I woke up this morning, but bam, 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 and I decided that I would say hi and maybe help out with, uh, with some understanding of the whole uh, fusion stuff. Because I, you know, gosh, gosh, dang it, gosh, gosh, darn, dang it, I, I really think that this is not uh, something that needs to be in the way of you creating things, but it is for for some of us. So let's stop that immediately. What's going on? Hey, tell me the best thing that's happened to you in the last week or so. Give me the highlights. I want to know about you. All right? You're what's important. Resolve's cool. But you're you're what's important, okay? So tell me, tell me what's up, man. You guys, it's so glad to see. I'm so glad to see all your names and stuff. So excited. Will there be snacks and juice on this ex escapade? Absolutely. If you bring them, you you can have all the snacks and juice you want. Oh boy, is that a Pixel Watch? No. This is this is um this is actually a Garmin. It's a Forerunner watch, I think, is what it's called. Um, and it, I, I started uh, running recently, actually. Pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. I'm like actually sort of um, uh, active these days, which is pretty crazy. So yeah, that's, that like tracks, tracks running and stuff. I never thought I'd be that kind of person, but here we go. Those watches are pretty cool. I think so too, yeah. Curious about custom controls. Can't think of the name of them. Don't have DaVinci loaded. Um, well, there's the there's the custom control node. I think that's what it's called. Oh boy, is that what it's called? Custom tool, custom tool. Yeah, we could get into that here in a second. Guys, be thinking about your questions. Um, I don't know how many I can get to throughout this. Um, even though we have chat on slow mode, it still kind of goes faster than I can really answer the questions, but I didn't want to like set it any higher because I mean, come on boys, come on. It's miserable to have to wait, so. We'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Will you make some advanced VFX tuts in Fusion, especially people who are coming from AE? Most of the advanced Fusion tuts on this are a decade old. You don't say. Danjo, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, 
My biggest question on Fusion is text plus with character level styling still so awfully slow during timeline replay. Uh, I'm not sure on that one. We'd have to try it out. Have you tried it on your system? Today I received compliments for a job I made, not with DaVinci. Well, congratulations, Vantils. That's awesome. I moved from Premiere Pro to DaVinci after watching your videos. Thanks a ton, man. Hey, you're welcome. You're welcome. That's so cool. Man. Hi, from a displaced Texan in Ohio. Oh, wow. Well, hello. Uh, hello from India. Your Fusion tutorial was awesome. Thank you. Working off a laptop, I must be patient and see the media out, often guessing and hoping with lucky results. Me too. Me too. Thanks for your tutorials. <clears throat> Hold on. I have a thing in my throat. Uh, just got into video editing and just turned two real estate videos for kicks. Nice. Fusion is a mystery to me, though. How do we replace Sky and DaVinci? Okay. All right. I'll be thinking about that. Okay. Getting good with my settings, with settings on my D3300 and getting good at clip champ davinci's coming nice okay cool 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 can you do green screen um we might be able to do some of that i gotta see if i have footage for that let me let me check i don't have a whole lot of green screen footage we are um i know i've been saying this for a while but we are working on some green screen stuff that uh is gonna be dope you guys are really gonna like what we're doing here um let me see if I, I do have some green screen footage that's a little unrealistic, but we can I can kind of show you the basic the basic stuff there. Um yeah. Okay. Having issues with nodes. I know you have videos, but I'm having issues with what kind of things you can do with it. Is there a difference between DaVinci and Premiere Pro? Ooh, that's a big question. Um okay. Let's I think we're gonna talk about nodes here in a second. And um, I'll probably walk us through some uh, basics of nodes, just because I feel like this is the hardest thing for Fusion. Um, the specific ways that you do things, you can learn, but until you understand the concepts of nodes, it's kind of just this big barrier, you know? It's kind of this big barrier. I'm pretty sure the music isn't too loud, right? It's all right. Is it all good? Um, Got any tips for staying focused on a task for a long time? Oh boy, man. Um, for me, it is, uh, it's planning, right? So planning out things to where you, um, you are completely sure that what you're working on right now is worth it and you don't need to be working on something else. That for me is the big difference, right? If I'm constantly second guessing stuff, then I tend to kind of jump in between things all the time. But it's like, I'm going to block out two hours. I'm not going to have my phone on. I'm not going to open tabs. I'm just going to work on this. And I've decided beforehand and already understood like that um, this is appropriate for me to do right now. That's what helps me focus. All right. Um, to composite 3D animations from Blender into Fusion, is EXR files the normal industry standard or are there other way I'm not aware of? Uh, as far as I know, EXR files are the way to go. Yep. What do you think about M1 chip? Good with DaVinci? Uh, yeah, pretty good from what, from, I have, I have like a couple years old Mac Pro, one of the first M1s, not Mac Pro, uh, uh, MacBook Air. And it does pretty well with Resolve. Pretty well, like it on like a 1080, just editing video, does pretty good job. Yep. I would like to make a little money with it. I make stuff free for people's live stream and should be getting work with my new skills. Nice. Got stuck doing a countdown. It seems they changed a bunch of menus in 18. Mm, um, they probably, they did switch some of the interface a little bit in the Fusion page in the inspector, um, but it should be basically what it was. Kind of the same thing. Can you actually do green screen type effects in Fusion? Yes. Yep. Yeah, it's really good for that actually. I was using Fusion the other day and for some reason I went to add text and put it behind my media and it put it behind my media. Oh, you probably just have uh, have your um, nodes flipped, your um, merge node flipped. Love the videos, but I have a doubt regarding compositing. I'm just starting to learn the basics, but I wonder if it's better to learn Fusion or After Effects for compositing. I edit mostly in DaVinci. If you edit mostly in DaVinci, I would, if you're starting from the ground up anyway, the concepts that you learn in 
fusion uh, are gonna transfer to After Effects if you ever need to. I would learn fusion. Yep. Can I copy a fusion node and paste it in the new clip in another timeline, kind of like power grades? Uh, yes. Yeah, you can do that. Good tip to learn and be focused. Confusion is the modifier thing and how it works. Oh yeah, the modifiers. That's like a whole world that like I've only scratched the surface of. Pump for this, thank you. Hey, thank you, Brad, appreciate that. Fusion is amazing, really amazing. The problem is how to choose the right option sequence to do something most of the functions are unknown. Okay. All right, so let's jump into this. Uh, let's let's jump into Fusion. Um, I'm going to switch to just a regular shot here of some kind. I don't know what I call a regular shot, but I'm going to switch it to here. Okay, there we go. I think I have my Zoom working and everything. Yay, look at that. And guess what? I even have a fancy schmance thing. Look at this. Great. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I want to just walk through some of the basics of Fusion because I feel like a lot of us uh, don't still understand how nodes work. So my goal right now is if you stick with this stream over the next however long we stream, an hour or two, um, that at the end of this stream, I am pretty convinced you will know how to use nodes in Fusion, okay? So if you pay attention and, uh, and you're committed, I think we can do this, all right? Because honestly, it's a lot more intimidating than it is hard. Okay, so we can we can do this together. We can uh, we can get after this, and uh, it's gonna be okay. All right. How do you mean by the node slipped? I'll I'll show you that in a second. Okay, Magnet Man. In just a minute. What end? Sixty four cartridge. That's Tony Hawk, man. Tony Hawk two. I'm confused about how you mask objects, remove objects, or to pin an object onto the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot. So there's a lot a lot of questions that I'm hoping we can kind of get through here. So here's what we're gonna do, okay? When is your complete tutorial on DaVinci Resolve 18 coming out? Also, will you ever do a tutorial on advanced grading? Um, are you talking about the complete, like the end-to-end? -end? Is that what you're talking about, Mixologist? If so, uh, we don't have plans to do an end-to-end uh, Resolve 18 video right now, but we do have uh, quite a few courses out that um, this, we have an upcoming course that's gonna be out in a couple weeks that is um, on workflow, okay? You guys get to hear it first. So based on our last uh, live stream, um, we, are, we are making a workflow course that is all about how you actually make stuff in Resolve um, and it's good for beginners. It goes through all the basics, but it also is really, really good for if you're pretty familiar with Resolve and you just want to make things faster um, or or do things better. That's all about that. It's going to be really sick, it, especially if you like editing, storytelling, and kind of just refining how you do stuff. Very practical guide. Really excited about it. We're almost finished with it. So pretty neat. Um, okay, so let's talk about nodes here, okay? And what I want to do is kind of walk through this, these basics. And if you have questions that aren't really related to nodes, we might have some time at the end, but right now we kind of want to focus on this, this right here. Okay. So, um, so let's start with this. Um, anytime that you use fusion, fusion is generally for compositing. It's for doing fancy things, right? It's combining different uh, different elements together. It's for adding explosions. It's for doing green screen. It's for making motion graphics. It's all the stuff that you would think about using After Effects for, using a compositor for, anything that's like fancier than just normal editing, you can generally do in Fusion, okay? The cool thing is that Fusion is hooked up right to the timeline in Resolve, so I can take a shot uh, right from the timeline that I have trimmed or whatever edited here. And then I can just switch into fusion and do fancy stuff and then switch back and it's there on the timeline and I don't have to render it out. I don't have to round trip to any other fancy, uh, software. It's really nice. Okay. So that's one of the main advantages. Now, um, if you're familiar with Photoshop or after effects or, uh, you know, even, even doing things in the timeline, um, where we have kind of some kind of uh, 
layer type of system like this, um, it probably makes sense to you that if you want to put text over something, right, you put text on the top layer and you have your um, your footage on the bottom layer, right? Uh, well, Fusion doesn't really do that. Fusion doesn't have a layer system. Fusion uses nodes. And the way nodes work, nodes are basically like a flowchart, right? So uh, we start generally on the left and we flow to the right. Does that make sense so far? Any questions so far? We're gonna take this pretty slow because I want even the most noob person, the person who is like, I've tried nodes 50 times and I don't get it, I must be dumb. I want that person to get it, okay? That's where we're at so far. If there's questions related to this, please ask me, okay? Okay, so we start out with a really simple flow chart here. If we take a, um, if we do it like this, if we take a clip from the edit page and we just switch over to Fusion while looking at that clip, that opens it up in Fusion and we have a really simple flow chart. Each node, yes, this will be available after the stream is over, yep. Each node has uh, one job, basically. Um, you can kind of argue that, but it essentially has one job. This first node is called Media In, and it has one job, and its job is to take the media from the timeline, okay? Hey, you're welcome, Kareem. Thank you so much. So this takes media right from the timeline and it brings it into Fusion, okay? That's its job. Then we follow this all the way to the right and we see this little arrow, right? This arrow is attached to media out. Anything that's attached to media out is, uh, media out has one job. Media out takes whatever's attached to it and it brings it back into the timeline, okay? So what happens is that when we switch over to Fusion, from the timeline, each node or each uh, shot starts with this really basic node structure here. Take the piece of media from the timeline and then we're not doing anything yet and then put it back, okay? Does that make sense so far? Tell me questions so far. When it, <laughs> I have the opposite problem with Fusion. I wish I could edit in Fusion. Why do you wanna edit in Fusion? All these nodes connected together or separate according to the timeline. Um, each shot has its own set of nodes. I think that's what you're asking. So the, this node, this stuff right here, this is specific to this shot only. Okay, so it's not the whole thing. Okay. So what we're doing is we're taking this shot, we're bringing it into Fusion, and right now it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because we're not doing anything with it, right? What we're gonna do with it is gonna happen in between these nodes. And then Media Out is putting it back in the timeline, okay? It used to being in Fusion that leaving it to edit anything is a pain for me. Oh man, that's, yeah, that's kind of the opposite problem of a lot of people, I feel like. That's interesting. Can you feather each points individually of a mask? Yes, you can. Uh, we can get into that in a little bit. Makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna start with that. Now, anytime that we add a node, we we anytime that we wanna do something to our footage or to our elements or whatever we have in here, we need to generally use a node for it, okay? I wanna let you know, I'm new to DaVinci about a year and your videos are so helpful. You basically taught me everything I know. Hey, that's awesome. That's awesome, thank you. Are there keyboard shortcuts to go from Fusion to Edit to Color? Yes, there are. Under Workspace, switch to Page, right here, Media. So it's Shift, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's right there, okay? Why is Fusion better than After Effects? So um, it depends on who you talk to. I think that doing no things with nodes is really, really great, okay? And we'll explore that in a little bit. I love After Effects too. After Effects is great. Finally, someone explains this well. Thanks in advance for the explanation. Hey, you're welcome. I want to do the VFX and motion graphics. I used to do an After Effects like Video Copilot. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Believe me, we are we are on the same wavelength here. How do you make nodes and folders in Fusion? You can group them. 
uh, if you want to. If you have a bunch of nodes, right? So like, I don't know, I'll just grab a bunch of nodes here, right? You can select both of those and hit Control G and that'll group them together. You can double click them to open them. Okay, that's a quick one. That's beyond where we are right now. There's some sort of list you could tell us all the, tell us everything these nodes can do. Um, I don't think there's one that, I mean, there's the, um, the resolve manual. So like if you go to help and you go to DaVinci Resolve reference manual, that'll open that up. You guys, if you haven't checked this out, this is such a good resource. Check this out. Don't judge me. It automatically opened an edge. Okay. I don't actually use edge, but you can, um, you can find like, you can find fusion nodes and stuff in this document and it will tell you all kinds of things about all of those. So definitely check that out, okay? If you have a top layer video in the editing tab and then you jump into Fusion, media in consists of the top layer only. Um, yes, that will, that will bring in, so if I have this right here and I switch over to Fusion, that's gonna bring in that top clip, yes. If you wanna bring in both clips, there's ways to do that, okay? All right, I'm trying to get to everybody here. I don't know if I'll be able to. How do you copy a comp as a whole new iteration and not linked so that if one copy is altered, it does not apply to the other copy? Uh, I th think that it does that automatically, yeah. Guys, I know I'm going really slow for some of you, this is, this is for the people that don't understand Fusion yet, okay? Okay. So, anything that we want to do to this footage, we need to use a node for, okay? So if I want to blur this footage, I need to use a blur node, okay? So I can grab from this toolbar right here, these are kind of some of the most commonly used nodes. And if I grab it and drag it down, that'll make a new node. Now, you'll notice nothing's happening here, that's because we haven't connected the blur node yet. So what we need to do is hook this up in a flowchart, and we need to take our original footage coming from our media in and run it through this effect. Okay. So um, the way I can do that is grab this line where it clicks, where it turns blue, and now I can reconnect it to stuff. So I can drop this on blur and that will connect it to the input of the blur. And I can take the output of the blur, that's that gray square, and connect it to media out. Now, uh, it's hard to tell, but it is actually blurring this a little bit. I'll zoom this in like 400% so we can see. And the way that I adjust anything with a node is I select the node, and then I go over here to the inspector, which you can't really see under my face, and these are kind of the properties of whatever I have selected, just like in the edit page, right? So I can take this blur size and push that up and that's going to blur my shot. So what we're doing here is we're making a really simple flow chart that goes from media in, which is grab the footage. Then we're running it through blur and blur is blur whatever footage we, uh, blur whatever image we connect to this. And then media out is now put it back into the timeline. If we switch back over to the edit page, we have a blurry piece of footage, right? So now we've made a very simple and probably uh, don't really need to use Fusion for it, but we made a simple comp in Fusion that's just blurring some footage, okay? Um, we don't need to render it out or anything. We just switch back to the edit page and it lives there. In fact, this whole fusion composition lives in this clip in the edit page. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Tell me about it. What are the questions so far? After Effects has more plugins, but beyond just being older and having more support from third party, it's not better. Yeah, that, I, I agree. Um, the, uh, the, the presets and everything is a big deal. Yep. What does the Boolean node do? Yeah. Um, we'll have to get into that <laughs> later. <laughs> I thank you for, for asking these good questions, guys. Some of these I'm gonna have to get to later because we're really building on the very basics, okay? This is gonna be a very boring, basic uh, <laughs> thing here, okay? 
But for somebody who doesn't know the basics, hopefully this will be super helpful. Where's the toast, Casey? You will get no likes until I see toast. I don't have any toast with me. I'm gonna have to explain this without toast. I'm so sorry. Never saw why people think fusion is the hardest tab. In my opinion, it's the easiest. It kind of depends. Kind of depends. If you're familiar with nodes, it probably makes a lot of sense, you know? Especially if your name has VFX <laughs> in it, you probably have some, you probably have your mind around it a little. Okay. Can you blur a few frames within a clip and not the whole clip? Yes, you can. You can do that. Um, let's get into that a little later, okay, if we have some time. Um, basically, how you do that is keyframe it, just like you would anything. Why am I so sexy? I was born, I was born this way. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, would it be better to update to Resolve 18 than 17? I, I would. I think Resolve 18 is great. Starting Blender shading helps you learn the node workflow so much. I absolutely agree. Um, I learned this first before Blender, but then Blender made a ton of sense. It's good to go through the basics every once in a while. I agree. I agree. How do you instantly zoom the cursor on the stream? Yeah, it's it's a, uh, I think it's called Glass Brick. It's a, uh, it's a utility for Windows. So I hit the tilde key and it zooms in. It's nice, huh? Keyframing and fusion makes no sense to me. It's one of those things where once you wrap your head around it, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense automatically. It's like that. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, okay? The media out node is missing. No, it's right here. Are you talking on yours? Would love to see the way you use SVG files in Fusion for logo motion graphics. Have you seen my video on that? I do have a video on exactly that. Is Nuke similar to Fusion? In some ways, yeah. Yeah, in that it uses nodes. There's a lot of similar things in, in Nuke. I haven't used Nuke a whole lot, but I've watched a few tutorials. And actually, I've, I've watched a bunch of Nuke tutorials and then just applied them to Fusion because it's really similar in, in, in some ways, right? Okay. So does this make sense so far? That we have media in and we run it through a blur and it makes it blurry and then media out brings it back into the timeline, okay? This is pretty important to um, to talk about here is the difference of nodes. So one thing that trips people up is it's difficult to understand why you run through one node, why you hook up a node a certain way and then another node you have to use a merge and another node you have to connect a certain way. One in chat, if that is confusing to you and you're like, I, if somebody could just freaking answer that, that would be so helpful. <laughs> Can I not private the stream? No, I'm not gonna private the stream. Don't worry about it. Yeah. If your media out node is missing, you can uh, hit shift spacebar and type media out and add a media out node again. Okay, grab this and hit add, media out, that should work, okay? Okay, can you have two separate media ends for one node set? Yes, you can have as many media ends as you want. By default, whatever clip that you grab from the timeline is going to be this media in one, all right? You can also, if you have two clips, let's say, all right, so I'll just grab these two clips. You can also select these, right click, and d -d 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 go to new fusion clip. And that will combine those together. But once you click into Fusion, it has both of those shots in your nodes. And so here's the first shot. Here's the second shot. Right? Pretty cool. Okay. Where do you get your stock? A lot of this is ArtGrid. ArtGrid has great, great footage. Um, I have a affiliate link if you guys want to check that out. I get a little little bit a little bit of bunts from that, and you guys get two two months free if you sign up through that. So that's pretty neat. Keyframes panel has usually been buggy for me when trying to adjust timing. Yes, yes, that is the case. I don't know how they haven't fixed that yet, but you know what? I haven't told them about it yet. I have I haven't actually made a formal complaint, so maybe that's on me. 
That's what the people at Black Magic would say. <laughs> um, you've ever tried working in fusion with a vertical node tree? Uh, I mean, yes, but I don't. I don't see a major point in that because I don't come from. I think I think Nuke uses the vertical tree, and I'm not that familiar with Nuke, so I don't see any point. You know, effects are more confusing than putting nodes together. Okay, what do you mean by that? Any good footage stock services you recommend? Not making money from YouTube yet, so looking for something a little... Oh, like free? Um, yeah, there are some. I, I forget I forget what they are. I'm sorry. I'm super helpful. Kind of talk about fusion composition as it's causing me a lot of rendering issues. Oh, like making a new fusion composition? Okay. Is there a shortcut to instantly connect two disjointed nodes? Um, not that I know of. Can you save and reuse a node tree as a preset for other clips? Yes, you can. One way you can do that is just select all of these, right click and go to settings, save all as or save as. And you can just save this like to your desktop as a settings file. Check this out, this is cool, okay? And then let's say, I'm gonna keep media in and media out because I don't wanna jack with stuff, but like you can grab grab stuff from the um, desktop, like here's my settings, I'll just drag that in there and that will make those nodes again. Isn't that cool? Super helpful. Okay. You've been subscribed to Artlist for two years that I've never used, oh no. Oh no. Yeah, Unsplash is great for free photos, yep. When I click one or two, I've noticed that only nodes, only my nodes I, I only see whatever the node is, but not the image that's a part of. Is that normal? Uh, yes. If, if I understand what you're talking about. So like if you have text, right? Right. And then you hit one on the keyboard, it brings up just the text without the image. Is that what you're talking about? How long does it take to become a resolve expert? Not long, super easy. <laughs> I don't know. As long as it takes to be an expert on anything, I guess. I don't know. When I rename the media in work, save, close footage. When I reopen it again, the media in is offline. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, I'm not sure why that is. That might be a bug. You should tell Blackmagic about that. Okay, so yeah, that's what it is. That's normal, yeah, because what you're doing when you load just a node is you're viewing that point in the uh, in the flowchart. You're not viewing the image, right? Because remember, each node has one job. And so this node's job is to make text. So what we're viewing is it making text. If we wanna see it on the image, we'd have to view the merge because the merge is, I, job is to put the text over the footage just like if we were to view media in we just see the footage without the text because we just have that footage here and nothing's happened to it yet you know what i'm saying okay so uh for the people that are confused of like how do i how do i know how to hook up a node to something right um because sometimes there's a merge sometimes there's not and why like what is this thing that nobody's telling me okay um, here's how it works. There are a couple different kinds of nodes. Um, and this is kind of something where you're going to have to just learn what they are, but this concept I think will help you. Okay. There are a couple different kinds of nodes. The first kind is, uh, an image or a generator. Okay. Um, the media in is an image node. So what this does is it takes media and that exists, right? It's it's creating an image of some kind, okay? This would be the same thing as if I had like a JPEG or a logo and I brought that in because it's bringing in an image, okay? Um, same thing, the same thing happens when I generate an image. Even though it's not an external thing, it's still making, it's still a thing ending up as an image okay so a background node this is creating an image it just happens to be a black image or a red image right or a four corner image right <laughs> like
like a gradient of some kind. That is making an image. Same thing for noise. This is making an image of clouds, right? Same thing for text. This is making an image that is some text, right? Same thing for a paint node um, in some ways. Eh, I, okay, I won't go there. But these are all images. What's up, Laura Marth? Um, all of these are images. So I'm going to add an underlay. Okay, and we'll call these images generators. So what I mean by that is that anything in this kind of category makes an image. How do I add an underlay? You select the uh, nodes that you want to put an underlay on. And I hit shift spacebar. That brings up this select tool panel and you can um, search for it and type UND for underlay. You can also go up to the effects panel and find it here. It's just faster to search it. Okay. Is Fusion CPU or GPU heavy? Yes, both. <laughs> it's it's moving more towards GPU, but there's some CPU stuff for sure. What's up, Justin Yummer? It's good to see you, man. This isn't where I parked my car. <laughs> Guess I'll learn this fire content. Uh... Okay. Yeah, paint is weird. I agree. Okay, so these are images or generators. Does that make sense so far? All of these types of nodes, they make an image or are using an existing image to bring in an image, right? It's it's an image. And you could certainly make the argument that everything makes an image, but we're just going to go for this right now, okay? Probably good to explain underlay doesn't do anything. Yeah, an underlay doesn't do anything. This is just for your organization, right? All this is is just a background so that we can see what's going on um, so that we can kind of keep organized, right? It's like drawing a box around something and saying this is a thing just to label it, right? Can we do motion graphics here as in After Effects? Yes. Yep. Okay, so if this makes sense so far, there are images, okay? Now... Um, there are also effects nodes, okay? So like this blur node, all right? What this is doing, this blur node, this is not an image. This isn't like making an image out of nothing and it's not bringing in an image, okay? It's not a video file, it's not a picture, it's not a logo, um, it's not generating a color or a background, um, it's not making text. It's it's not its own thing. It has to have something for it to show up. Like a verb. Yeah, it's like a verb, not a noun. Exactly. That's a great way to describe it, right? A modifier using something already existing. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Define underlay. Underlay is just literally a background that you use to label stuff. It doesn't do anything other than help you be organized, right? Okay. It's like all that you have the things on the table and you slip a piece of paper under it and you write on the piece of paper. This is what this is. That's all it is. Okay. So an effect, yeah, manipulates an image. So you have to have an image for this to exist. If I hit one on the keyboard, nothing shows up. Nothing shows up here on this left viewer. Okay, so I have to have something attached to this blur in order for it to be a thing. So if I connect my media in, which is an image to the blur, guess what? Now we have an image that we can look at, but it's dependent on the image that you connect to it. Okay, it's sort of like, yeah, an underlay is sort of like a folder. It's sort of like a folder. <laughs> it's like an open folder, right? It's more like, um, you know how you open a drawer and you have like, okay, your silverware drawer, right? 
and you have all the silverware inside of like the the little silverware caddy thing it's more like that okay it's like a it's sort of like a group but it doesn't hide anything it's like a group with everything out there <laughs> it's like a plate and you put all your food on the plate right i don't know there's a lot of different ways you could describe it okay this live available to watch later yep love your channel thank you guys thank you so much that's awesome okay so this blur this has to take this has to take an image and anything that is like this anything that is an effect it has to take an image so other effects would be like the color corrector effect or the curves effect right that kind of stuff needs an image brightness contrast These kind of nodes, these are effects. Okay, so we'll add an underlay there. This is just a way to label this. That's all we're doing, okay? These are effects. Okay, and I'll make it, I don't know, what color should we make it? Orange? Okay. Those are our effects. How does that color corrector work? You connect a image to the color corrector. And then in the inspector, you can adjust the colors of it, right? But again, this is a effect. So if we don't have something connected to it, it breaks. Like it turns red and it's like, wait, what? Like, I don't, what? That doesn't make any sense because I have to have something to color correct. Right now I'm color correcting nothing and therefore I'm nothing. <laughs> so that's why it gets all confused, right? Does that make sense so far? Yeah, it's like a grading tool. Yep. Am I right in thinking we color grade with nodes as well? I know there's a color tab, but it's a similar process. Uh, I mean, yes. Yes, uh, it's similar. In fact, you can you can kind of do, I wouldn't recommend trying to do a whole lot of color grading in Fusion. It's mostly about like matching one um, element to another or adjusting the brightness of an element so that it kind of fits together in a comp. It's less about doing like a color grade to it, okay? Confusion animations being saved as presets for later use, perhaps with values that we can publish and change right from the edit page. Uh, yes. You can make like your own templates and stuff. Yep. All right, Pingo, have a good night. Later, can you talk about expression? Yeah, if we have time, um, if you're still here, remind me, okay? One question for later, how do I save a Fusion clip so that I can use it in other videos? Yeah, I do have videos on that stuff, you guys, if, if you're wanting to know that kind of thing. Is this VOD going to be available later? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so far we've kind of reviewed a couple things here. So we have two types of nodes so far. We have images or generators and these make images. Now we have effects and these need an image in order to do anything. Okay. These are dependent on an image. Okay. Why can't I join media one to eclipse to media out? Like an ellipse, like a ellipse mask like this? Is that what you're talking about? Well, let's talk about that right now. Um, so we have these two kinds of nodes so far. We also have masks, which would be a rectangle, an ellipse, polygon, and be spline. Okay. What these do is these limit other nodes. So, um, these are used to tell a node to only do that node's job inside or outside of a certain area. Okay. So for instance, if we're going to do a blur, let's just bring this back down. Let's say we hook this up through a blur, which again needs needs an image in order to exist. And I'll just put this in media out. Oops, that's kind of a bug too. 
so you can't really do that, but that's okay. You hook it to media out. So now what we're doing, what we're actually telling it to do, the only things that are connected are media in, so grab the footage. Now we're running it through a blur. So we're taking that image and blurring it, and then we're putting this back out into the timeline, right? But let's say we only want this to blur in the middle. That's when we use a mask. So let's say, let's take this ellipse mask and we're gonna connect the output of this ellipse to the mask input of blur one, okay? So now this is only happening inside of our mask. Now, the reason why we don't hook up a mask like an effect is just because masks aren't really designed they, they just aren't designed to be hooked up that way. The mask is uh, actually more similar to a image um, node than it is to an effect node, okay? It's a lot closer to an image node than it is to an effect node. What do I mean by that? Well, this ellipse node, if I hit one, what it's actually doing is it's creating a black and white image. So what we can do is we can use this black and white image if we connect it correctly to any node, that's going to limit whatever that node does to just the white area, okay? So what we're doing here, what we're really doing is we're taking this footage and we're blurring it, but we're only doing it right here in the white area because we have this hooked up to this blue input of this blur. We're telling the blur to only do its job inside of the white area, okay? So that's really what we're doing. And then we're going to media out and actually rendering that. So does that make sense? Hey, Backland Farm, thank you so much, that's cool. Like a picture frame, sort of like a picture frame, yeah, yeah, it's, um, yeah, it only happens inside of it, or you can set it to be outside of it, but you're controlling it with a shape, right? Yep, you can do it the other way, absolutely. Um, the way that you do that is you can either do that in the mask right here, so I can select ellipse and go over here and click invert, just like that. And that'll just, and what that does is that flips the white and the black on this image. Because this blur, anything that we connect to this mask input, it's expecting this black and white image. So we can take this blur right here. Um, we can also, we can also do this with, within the blur if we want to. So here in the settings, if we switch to settings, I'll scroll down. You can see right above my head, it says apply mask inverted. If we click on that, that'll do the same thing, but it'll just do that inside of this node instead of this mask. So this mask is still black inside of white, but we're flipping it, but the blur is flipping it before it applies it, okay? And for different reasons, you might wanna do that either in the mask or outside of, or um, in the blur node, okay? One of the reasons is you could use a mask for multiple different things and one node, you might want to use the outside of the mask. And another node, you might want to use that same mask, but the inside of the mask. And you can switch those um, inside of each node, okay? Okay, so we kind of went through a bunch of stuff just now. Tell me your questions about everything so far. I'll put an underlay here. These are masks, okay? I want to know if this makes sense or if you have any questions regarding all of these things. Okay. I always forget where this stuff lives. Okay. Masks. Make this a little bigger so we can see what the heck is going on. There we go. Okay. Is the same foreground background change in Photoshop? It's like, yeah. Uh huh. It's a lot like that. What are the other points on the mask for? Um, I don't think I understand what that means. Other points on the mask? Ha! 
How do you know what parts of the nodes to connect to the other parts, the different colors and arrows and squares around it? Okay, that's a great question. Can we zoom in? Sure, we can zoom in. So these are image generators and effects. The node point, oh yeah, that, okay, great. Okay, here's masks. So these are th like the three major kinds of nodes, really. Any node that you do is going to be basically in one of these categories, except for really special nodes. Okay, but like 90% of the nodes are gonna be like that. How often do you go live with Q and A's? I'm going to be doing that more often, I think, uh, but I haven't for a while. Okay, so um, as far as these node, uh, these inputs right here, one thing you can do is you can mouse over one of these and it will tell you what it is. So a lot of the time you don't have to remember it, but after a while you get used to it, right? Generally, the first thing that, you, like the main input is yellow, okay? So like for an effect node, the yellow is just the input, which is usually the image input, okay? So whatever image we want to adjust brightness contrast on, we connect to the yellow. Same thing for color curves. Whatever image we want to adjust the curves on, yellow. Color corrector, whatever image we want to do color correction on, same for blur, we connect the image to the yellow input, okay? The blue input is always the mask input. So if we mouse over it, we can say effect mask. And you'll notice these are all in different places. Uh, it doesn't matter how this is hooked up, like, what direction things are going or where they're connected on the um, on the node, it's important the color and shape, right? So this white box will always be the output. This yellow triangle will always be the input. The blue triangle will always be the mask input, okay? For some nodes, there's some extra inputs, right? So there's the green input which changes depending on the type of node, okay? So for color corrector, it's match reference. For color curves, it's reference image, which is similar, right? This white one is gonna be match mask. This one's gonna be match mask, right? But like for fast noise, we have a white input. That's the brightness map. We have a gray input. This is the detail map, right? The good news is you don't have to memorize all of them. Because worst case, you can always mouse over them and see what it is. And honestly, like the few nodes that you're actually gonna be using on a regular basis, you're gonna get used to it. Almost, like most of the time, it's just the yellow input. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can What happens when you connect all the mask to one node? You can't. You can only connect one mask at a time. You can connect a mask to a different mask and kind of um, stack them. So if I, so like, let's say I have my um, ellipse mask right here. If I connect my rectangle mask to the ellipse mask, that's gonna do kind of a, a special thing. If you connect a mask to a mask, it combines the masks. And you can adjust kind of how that works in the inspector but it combines them, okay? So that's a little different than normally if you just apply a mask to an effect or an image or a merge, okay? Um, but one node can only receive one input per input. So you can, I can select, I can import, I can put this mask into that mask input, but I can't put two into this mask input, it'll switch them. Does that make sense? When will you use the merge node? We'll get to that in just a second. That's what we're doing next. A mask doesn't necessarily need to be part of a chain then. Can you use the same mask for multiple nodes? Yes. And that's what's so powerful about nodes is you can use a node for multiple things. We'll get into that in a second. How do you move a mask along with a video? Um, well, that's a complicated answer because there's a bunch of different ways that you could do it. Um, if you're tracking a video, you can apply that tracking data to the mask as well. You can also mask the video before it's moved 
you can mask things and then move them all at once as a uh, as a group. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Super helpful. Hey, thank you. That's good. Can we do animation motion design before the clip text, which we may use as intro? Can you show us how I asked earlier? Did you using fusion composition? Would love to know other methods. Can we do motion design before any clip text? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking there. Are you going to keep this live up? Yep. What's the best way to practice fusion? Meaning like practicing the piano for hours. Uh, yeah, it's literally opening up fusion and playing with the nodes. It's like that. I actually just released a video on that, on how to get better at fusion. How many nodes do you typically use during a project and which are your most common nodes? That is really, really dependent on what the effect is because some effects take four nodes and some, some take 20 nodes. It, it really depends on what you're doing. The most common you, nodes I currently use are background, transform, delta gear, polygon, rectangle, mask. That's about it, really. Yeah, those are those are some main ones for sure. Um, what's the best practice for combining masks? Like merge a bunch using the merge node? Um, no, it's probably combining them together like this if you're going to make. Um, or you can use a mat control, which is probably beyond what we want to talk about today. Mat controls are good, though. How to rename the underlay node. So you click off of it, make sure you're not selecting anything, and you hold down Alt or Option on Mac, and you grab and you click the underlay. That'll select just the underlay and not the nodes inside of it. And then you can hit F2 to rename it. It's kind of weird, because if you just select the underlay, it'll select everything. But if you hold down Alt, it selects it without kind of linking it, just like you would select just an audio or just a video track, you know? I don't have my air on, and it's so hot. For a long time, I feel like I'm getting smarter. Nice. <laughs> What's up, Michael? Thank you for popping in. Appreciate that. I was watching a video of yours in 3D and I can't figure out the camera and light nodes. Uh, do you have a lot of, do you have experience with 3D? Michael, like have you work, worked with stuff like Blender or anything before? After Effects has the puppet tool. Is there a node similar to that in Fusion? There is one, but I haven't been able to find it. Yeah. I'm not sure what the deal with that is, though. Like, they totally have one. It's called Warper. Oh my goodness, there it is. I'll have to check into that. It's called Warper. Yep. I don't know. Maybe it's a studio-only thing. I don't know. How do motion graphics work in Fusion? Uh, we might be able to get to that. We're, we're kind of going over the basics here real quick, and I, I can show you some stuff if we have time in a little bit here. Okay, so we have these main nodes. Somebody was asking, okay, so when do we use a merge node? Okay, this should make sense. This is why we're going over this, is hopefully this will make sense. You only use a merge node if you're putting an image over another image. Okay? So hopefully this is starting to click, right? The effects node don't, don't need a merge node, because why would they? They need an image. There's no point in having a merge node because you're not merging it over it. You're not putting an effect over something. You're running an image into an effect, through an effect. So there's no point in having a merge node. Um, that's not to say that this never gets connected to a merge node, but to add an effect to an image, you don't need a merge node. Does that make sense? You need to run the image through it. Okay, for a mask, a mask is just applied directly to a node. If I take the output and I apply it to the, the um, mask input, I don't need to merge it over it. All I'm doing is telling a node where to do its thing. There's no, there's no merging happening here. You're basically just saying, just do it right here, okay? I have a trouble understanding what goes on top of the other and emerged. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Yep, yep, that's a great question. So, but to start out with, we don't need a merge unless we're putting an image over another image. Okay? So, 
let's take a look at what that means. Um, let's see, I'll get rid of this blur and bring this up kind of out of the way here. Let's just get these out of the way. Okay, so these images, um, if I tried to put this media in into like onto my background like this, what what's actually happening here? This is kind of like a little test. What's actually happening there if I just run it through that background? What's really going on? Why doesn't that work? You guys know? It's an image on an image without a merge. Yeah. Yeah. Pow. It's creating a mask. What this is really doing, no, it's not covering it with the background. Here's what's happening is this background uh, is being masked by this media in. That's why it doesn't work. That's why we just have this background here. It's The background isn't on top of the footage. The footage is telling the background where to exist. And the footage is over the entire... Um, it's over the entire screen. And so it says, just do your thing on the entire screen, which effectively does nothing, okay? So this doesn't matter if I have this connected to the mask or not because we're just masking the entire thing, okay? You're just swapping it out. No, you're not swapping it out. You're not. This is why we're doing this live. You're not swapping it out. What you're doing is your base, it's, it's the same thing as, okay, here's what you're doing. If I make a rectangle mask here and I make the width and the height both one, so the mask, normally like we might select a part of the image like inside of here, but if I make the mask 100% of the width and 100% of the height, what I'm doing is saying, okay, do whatever you want inside of this mask and the mask is the entire thing. Okay, and then I connect that mask to the background. Guess what we're going to get? The exact same thing. Okay. What we're doing is we're telling, okay, make a background, generate a background, but only do it inside of the mask. And then the background goes, okay, that makes sense. Where's the mask? And then you say everywhere. And then background goes, okay, I guess I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. <laughs> right? Okay. You put the background, you're using the background as the mask. You're using, you're using the footage as a mask, which if you bring up the alpha channel, which is what it's actually looking like, is, look at this. This looks exactly like the mask does because it's just all white. It says do it everywhere. Okay. By the way, I'm doing that by hitting A on the keyboard that switches to the alpha channel. That's the transparency of something. And because this is a full screen image it's just saying doing it do it everywhere yeah let's put an entire mask everywhere exactly yeah so that's why that doesn't work okay so to to get this background to be over our media in what we need to do is make a merge node because there's no other way for us to put a background over the media in if we drag the background output on top of the media in like this what happens it's the same thing, right? It's using that entire background as the mask for media in, and we do not get what we want. So what we need to do is make a merge node, which has one job, just like all the other nodes. And its job is to take an image and put it over another image, right? Good, I'm glad it's helpful, okay? So let's make a merge node. That lives right here, sort of in the middle. This is a merge node. I'll grab this and drag this in. And let's look at the merge node here for a second. So we have three inputs. We have the yellow, which is our background input. We have the green, which is our foreground input. And we have the blue, which is our effect mask. Pretty much every node has an effect mask, by the way. Then we have our output, right? So now you can always like, if you get confused with nodes, you can always think about what you're, what you're hooking up and what you're actually telling it to do, right? 
So what I'm going to do is take our media in, which again is this image right here, and I'm going to hook it up to the merge. Okay. And I'm just dragging it on top of the merge. And by default, it's going to put it in that first input. Okay. This yellow input. So merge is wanting two images. The first image is the yellow input. That's the background. And now we're going to take the output and put this in media out and I'll bring up media out. And now we have this original image. So this is the beginning before our merge. This is the media in. And then this right here is the media out. So effectively nothing is happening. Why is that? Tell me why nothing is happening right now when we have this hooked up like this. Why would this make basically nothing happen? Nothing's being merged. Exactly. Yeah, nothing's in the merge. So we have the merge and what the merge does, the merge has one job. It says I put stuff over other stuff. Okay. That's like it's add. All right. If it's going to run an ad on local TV, it goes, hey, everybody, I'm the merge and I put stuff over other stuff. Would you like a coffee cup merged with a marker? I can totally do that. Look at that. That'll be $29.95, right? That's its job. And right now we're saying, OK, take this footage and merge something over it. And the merge goes, absolutely, no problem. What do we want to merge over it? And we're saying nothing, please. And Merge goes, nothing? Okay, I'll put nothing over that. That sounds great. And you're, this is the same price, but it sounds great. And then we put it into media out and guess what? It doesn't look any different because we don't have anything attached to the input uh, of the of the foreground, right? So let's take, um, I'm gonna use text just cause it's a little bit easier to see. So here's our text, it says, Squid fichvidgudi ezd fezd faaf. Okay. All right. We have a depressed out merge node. Okay. All right. So now let's take the output of this text, which is what? It's an image, right? It's an image. Again, we can't put this text over the media in because weird stuff will happen. We take the output of the text and we put it into this merge and look what happens. We have the text over our background. Okay. It does become, yeah, it does tax resources. It's less so in 18. 18 is a lot more optimized. I've had this very problem before. Good. I'm glad this is helpful. Okay. So that's the only time we would use a merge node is if we want an image to go over another image, which incidentally is a lot when you, when you're compositing, it's a lot. You use a lot of merge nodes. Okay. If you want to add a text, you would need to attach it to a merge. Yes. Now this is a little bit confusing because, uh, sometimes in some software, they will use text as an effect. Like, you, like you'll like you have an add text or add title or something and you drag it onto your clip and it will add text over it, right? But, and that's sort of an effect. But in Resolve, and I'm trying to think if there's an, an exception to this, I don't, I don't think so. I think in Resolve, it's always a separate thing that you put over stuff, okay? Text can't be put on top of an input because images can't be put on another image. Yes. So an image can have an input, um, but it's generally a, yeah, but it's a mask. Okay. So the problem is not that you can't connect it. It's just that when you do connect it, it doesn't really do what you want it to do. Does anybody have a guess? What would happen if we take this text and I'll just add something else like, um, We'll just make text like this so it's a little bit easier to see. What would happen if we didn't use the merge, but we just take the output of this text and put it into this blue input here for our media in? What would happen then? Do you guys have a guess? What would happen if we took this text output and we dropped it on right here? Can 
Can I explain those background and foreground lines? Yeah, in just a second. The background only shows within the border of the letters exactly. That's what happens. So check this out. I take the output of this text, drop it on the media in, and look what happens. It's limited to just inside of the text, which is great if that's what you want. Beautiful if that's what you want. There's nothing wrong with doing that unless you don't want that. <laughs> right? Because right now we have this um, text-shaped background, this text-shaped uh, footage over nothing. The reason we're doing that, the reason why it does that is because we're taking this this um, footage and we're saying, okay, take this footage and only do it where it's white. Or actually it's in, in reality, it's only do it where the alpha is, like where there's not transparency, which if we switch to the alpha channel here, it's black and white, right? So only do it where it's white. We just also happen to have white text. This works the same way for green text, right? So here's green text. And it's, it's, uh, it's see-through everywhere where there isn't text. And if we switch to A, if we hit A for the alpha channel, it's black everywhere it's see-through and it's white everywhere it's not see-through. And we're applying that transparency to this media when we connect it to the mask. All right? Okay. Merge node takes foreground input image text and puts it on top of the background input image as many options like layer compositing and Photoshop. Yep, exactly. That's so cool. You can customize text textures like that. Yep, exactly. Can we make a stroke line on the text? Yes, you could, but you're going to have to do a little bit of different stuff. Um, you can, you can, um, if you like merge it over, right? So we'll take this alpha off, right? We can make, we can do all kinds of stylizing this text because this is a text plus. Just like in the edit page, this is text plus. And so we can do all kinds of things. Like we can add an outline. So there's a red outline. Let's make it not so terrible here. <laughs> okay. That's just still pretty bad. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah, we can, we can do that. That's not going to matter a whole lot for uh, if we're masking our footage. It's just going to make that transparency a little bit bigger, right? Because all it is, it's not looking at the colors. It's looking at the alpha, which is black and white. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Um, somebody asked about the foreground and background uh, lines here, these connectors. So by default... A merge has two inputs. The yellow input is the background. The green input is the foreground. This is something that you kind of just have to get used to. Yellow is the background, green's the, the foreground. But if you select it and you hit control T, it switches them. You see that? So it's not about the position of them. It's not about what is on top versus what's connected to the left. It's about the color, right? So I can have this down below it and it's all about the color. This is still the foreground. Green is always the foreground. If I switch this, green is the foreground, yellow is the background, and now look what happens. If we bring this up, we don't see the text because the text is under this footage. I can switch this merge, I can hit Control T, and that switches the foreground and the background, right? You can use imported images or shapes instead of text for the effect. Yep. Yep. In fact, that's a really common thing. How do you time an effects node to start and stop in a video clip uh, with keyframing? You keyframe it, mm -hmm. um, usually with the blend. So like right above my head where it says blend, that's like the strength of a node, right? So that can, that happens in the merge node. Generally it's, it's in the merge node, um, but you can also do that in an effect node. I can fade this in and out by clicking that by switching that blend parameter, right? I'll zoom this in so it's, I don't know, it doesn't really help, does it? But anyway, that's how you do it, is blend, okay? And so what I would do is 
um, keyframe that. We can get into keyframes, but basically you tell it to be on at a certain time and off at another time. And um, you do that over time. How do I get my fusion to look like that? What do you mean? Can I merge background and text? Absolutely. You can merge any two images. You can merge 100 images together if you have enough um, merges. That's the other thing is that a merge only merges two things. So it controls how this foreground goes over the background. If I want to merge another piece of text, let's see, like this, right? Text two, and we'll change this color to blue. If I want to put this over it, I have to add another merge. So I can take the output, and also there, this is a, uh, a little um, shortcut. I can take the output of a node and just drag it over the output of another node, and looks what, look what happens. It makes a merge, and it makes the background the background and the foreground the foreground. Okay, Whatever you're dragging over the other one is going to be the foreground. So now we have the text 2 over the text 1. Okay? So that's how you do multiple layers. Like if you have like 15 layers, you're going to have... 15 merges. Well, probably 14 merges, but you get the idea. You understand. Does DaVinci resolve workflow, other software like AE and Photoshop? Uh, not directly, no. Like you can export stuff. Um, it does actually, it does import Photoshop, um, Photoshop files, and it does a pretty good job actually. Um, you can import them into Fusion with the layers and everything. Suppose we want to add text with the black background before any clip. So suppose this text with the background is my intro and later clips the main video. How can we perform it in Fusion? What I would do is make that graphic, make that text, and then do it in the, the edit page. See, this is where I, I think there's also kind of a disconnect sometimes is you can't forget that Fusion is part of the whole um, Resolve architecture, right? So this graphic right here, this lives in our edit page. So I can decide when this happens, just like a video clip, right? So I can put this before another clip and I have my intro, which is just looks amazing. So good. And then my first clip, right? And that's how I would do it is in the edit page, but you work on the specific part, the specific like art composition thing in the fusion page. Does that make sense? How do I merge two images while having both in the foreground? Did that answer your question, uh, Patrick? Merges can be similar to layers. Merges are essentially putting one layer over another. It's kind of like the answer to layers, but instead of having a stack of layers, you're telling what element to go what over what other element, basically. You're saying take an element and then put this over it. So make this image and then make this image and put this image over it, right? This might be off fusion topic, not sure, but how do we time lapse of images in DaVinci? Is it pretty easy? Um, it's pretty easy. Yeah, you do that in uh, in the edit page generally. You can bring in all the images and um, it you can set resolve to bring them all in as one clip and then you can set the um, the frame rate and stuff. Why did the cache folder fill up with over 100 gigabytes of data after I rendered a project? Did you render a really long project in a um, in a big format? I'm not sure. How is 3D and Fusion? Fusion can do a lot of really cool 3D stuff. Um, there are it does native 3D a bunch of stuff. It's really cool. Um, you can even you can't really model, I guess, but you can add primitives and stuff and you can light things and add cameras and do animation and stuff. Very cool. You can import um, FBX files. It's great. Um, the renderer doesn't do stuff like global illumination, doesn't do HDRI lighting, um, doesn't do stuff like that. Uh, that's a little limited, but you can actually bring in quite a bit of really cool stuff. It's, it's quite good actually. Um, but you're not going to get like a photorealistic render from Fusion, right? But you can bring in like graphics and stuff, and it's pretty good for that. 
can you create multiple alpha outputs in the color page? Um, I'm trying to think of what, what that really means. I mean, you can make an alpha output for a clip. I don't know if you can do multiples. I'm not sure what you would use that for. I mean, you could export one and then export another, I guess. You don't need all the pre-composed layer stuff like AE nodes are more flexible. Totally agree. Could you do the photo timeline with Photoshop? Um, I'm not sure what you're asking. Imported Adobe SVG file, but it looks blurry. How can I do it and get sharp image? What probably happened is you didn't set the, um, the resolution very high. Like the resolution needs to be pretty high for that. That's probably what's happening. Will you be making any motion graphic videos? I do have quite a few um, on the channel still. I just released one a couple weeks ago, actually. How to easily get solve error under one when camera tracking for 3D? Boy, that's a big old question. And I'm not, I don't have the stuff to really show that really well. Um, that's, it depends on the shot. <laughs> Cool thing about the text nodes you demonstrated is you can merge them both together and then merge that image with the media in. Yes, exactly. You could do that. Yeah, that's the thing is like, this is a really basic version of stuff, but like, let's take a look at what it actually looks like a lot of the time. Okay. So when it comes to fusion, so now that like we've really went over those kind of basic stuff, um, hopefully this will, let's see, I'll just take some of this text here. Hopefully this will make a lot of sense, like what we're doing, okay? So I'll connect our media into our media out. And um, let's let's do this. I'll take suggestions on what we can do. I'm not gonna do something really difficult just because there's a lot of doing it on the fly and not being prepared to do, you know, a 3D camera track and all that stuff. Um, but something simple, maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll take some suggestions for something simple and hopefully we can figure out something simple to do here to um to kind of example exemplify how things work practically in fusion okay okay is there a function that works like the pen tool in premiere um are you talking like making a mask if so the polygon mask works like that so you can you can make a mask like this yep Sometimes in render, it creates visual artifacts. Re-rendering usually fixes it. But do you know what may cause those things like pixelation in the quarter of a screen? Ooh. Um, usually it's video drivers that are out of date that do stuff like that in my experience. Usually updating resolve, updating video drivers, updating your OS fixes that stuff. I don't know. Change the color of the ocean. Um, we could do that. Um, the, we, that's probably something we would do in the color page, um, but we could do that. But I'm, I'm looking for like specific fusion kind of stuff. Let's remake the first matrix. Yeah, just real quick. Let's go. Let's go for it. Differences between Resolve Fusion and Fusion Standalone app. There's not a lot of differences, actually. Um, the fusion inside of Resolve is pretty similar. I was stuck on it all day yesterday. Is there a way I can get in touch with you to get some insight on it? Oh, on the tracking. Um, honestly, I don't, I'm like, I haven't done enough 3d tracking to like really give you some good advice on that. I need to up my 3d tracking skills. How do you do green screen effects? Okay. Let's talk about, yeah, let's do green screen. Um, this is, Green screen's tricky, just, just for the record, okay? Green screen's a little bit trickier than it seems like it might be, okay? So here's a green screen um, footage. And here's what we're doing so far. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this really slow and hopefully this actually works because it can be some messing around sometimes. Um, Delta Key has changed recently. I don't, I, I have not, I guess I haven't checked it out a whole lot recently. So we'll, we'll just see how it goes. Media in is bringing this in from the the uh, 
the timeline media out is bringing it out. So one of the things we're gonna wanna do is take out this green screen. We do that generally with a effect called Delta Keyer, okay? So I'll hit shift space bar, that'll bring up select tool and I'll type D-E-L-T-A, that'll bring in Delta Keyer, D-K, like that, okay? I'll add that and what, that's, and what this does is adds it as an effect. So Delta Keyer is an effect, right? Because it needs an image and then it's gonna do something to it. Um, there's, <laughs> there's a, a okay. This is, this is one of those things where it's like a little more complicated than I really want to get into, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Generally, um, there's a couple different ways to do this, but one way is you pick the background color. And so we can take this background color uh, eyedropper thing. I'm clicking and dragging, and I can just drag it onto the green screen like this. Okay. Anytime that we see this checkerboard, that checkerboard is... Um, is transparent but uh this sort this might look good from where you guys are but if we zoom in here um we can see there's little artifacts here yeah, i don't know if you can quite see them uh if i hit a we can see these little kind of gray this noise and that means that this isn't really keying this really well um it's leaving a bunch of junk where the screen is Okay, so um, one way that we can fix this, I hope this works, I'm a little rusty on green screen, oh boy. Uh, but um, one way that we can fix this is over here in our mat, we can use this threshold, okay? So if I switch this to, let's see, I'll bring this up here in the left viewer too, but I'll hit A to switch this to alpha. Remember black is transparent and white is opaque. So we have a couple of problems. One is we have a little bit of green spill on her um, hat. And so some of these kind of gray tones, that means it's gonna be see-through. And we can kind of see through it here like this. So we want this to be pure white and we want the background to be pure black. And so we can mess with the contrast of this mat by pushing up the bottom of the threshold here. And we can make more things white by pushing up the top of this threshold here like this. And that's gonna do a lot of work. Um, depending on depending on the footage, depending on how well it was shot, how noisy it is, um, what the lighting was like, and like a hundred other things, that may or may not work. Sometimes you'll do it like this and it will just ruin um, things like her hair, uh, in which case you'll have to get a little bit fancier. But um, generally you can kind of push this down a little bit and we wanna fill in all of that white so that everything is just solid white and the things that the like see-through parts are black, okay? So this is doing a decent job. Her hair is a little chunky, but we're gonna say that's okay for now. We're just gonna say that's okay, okay? <laughs> um, so that's removing the background um, to our green screen here. And if we play this back, it does, it does, a, it does a pretty, it's okay. It's all right. That's generally how that works. And then uh, we want to put this over some background, right? So let's, um, I don't know, let's find, this is the worst time to do this. <laughs> Um, I don't know. Let's say uh, school. S school. Okay. We'll find some some uh, clip that's going to be similar lighting. Maybe this is gonna. This is not the best way to go about this, but this is what we got. Because generally, if you're gonna do green screen to have it look good, you want it to match lighting. You want to match the angle. You want to match like a bunch of stuff. Let's say. Um. I don't know if we'll be able to make this look really good, but I'll give you the idea of it here. You'll want to start with footage or a background that actually is kind of planned and looks good. But for now, we'll use this 
And like I said, this is gonna look probably kind of fake just because we don't have the lighting matched and stuff, okay? But the, but the process is that, so now that we have this um, delta keyer here, what we have is an image with some transparency, okay? Um, and so what we wanna do is put this over this background. Now, this is where you wanna be a little careful when you're doing a background that isn't your media in, because look at the resolution here. This photo is like 4,000 wide by 2,000 tall. And it's not necessarily the same aspect ratio or size of our, um, of our timeline, right? The only acceptable replacement for green screen is a picture of a cat. This is correct. This is scientifically accurate. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so what we want to do is kind of set the composition size. And the easiest way to do that is just to grab a background node. Okay, so I'll grab this background node. This is gonna be our new background, like our base layer, okay? And I'll just make this, heck, we'll make it green, okay? So we have the background, which is 1920 by 1080. And we have this footage, which is 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna take this Delta keyer and I'm gonna put it over our background image. And I'll connect this background image to our media out. Does everybody understand what we're doing, why we're doing it this way? So now we have this green background with our subject, with our, our girl here in the foreground. Does everyone understand what we're doing? Okay, so you don't know, okay. Um, what we're doing is we are making a flow chart of what we want to happen here, okay? And I just kind of rearranged things because I want it to happen a little differently. Normally we'll start with media in and then we'll do stuff to it and merge things over it. But our media in, which is our original footage is actually gonna be the foreground. We're not gonna put stuff over our image. We're putting our image over other things, okay? So we're starting with this original footage and we're removing the green, okay? Using this Delta Keyer effect. So we're running that through an effect and then we're taking the result of that effect, which is an image, okay? An effect can output an image, but in itself isn't an image, okay? So what we have is this image right here that we wanna put over whatever background we want. Right now, we have just a background node, which is just a solid color, okay? And we can make this any color we want, it doesn't have to be green. I can adjust this, make it orange, whatever, okay? Yeah, del yeah Delta is, a, is a, an image effect, yep. It's a green screen. It removes green screens, basically. You can leave the footage with a transparent background and then back in edit page, you can add the video layer under the green screen layer. Yes, you could do that. That's generally, um, it, it's, it's hard to get that to look really good just because of how it, it's, it's easier to make it look really good if you do it all in fusion because you can adjust the edges a little easier and stuff like that, okay? I know this is a fusion discussion, but it seems like this would be more simply done in edit page. You can do a basic version of this in the edit page, yes. But what we're trying to do is understand how nodes work, and this is an example of how they work, okay? Would it be a problem if she was dressed in green? Yeah, probably. Yeah, we'd have to do some work. Just wanted to pop in and say how much I appreciate your get you're putting out. I'd still be premier Adobe Slate, if not for you. Hey, thank you, Gator. I appreciate that. Okay. So what we're doing is we're removing the background and then we're putting this over something. What are we putting it over? We're putting it over the background, this orange background, and then we're putting it back into the timeline. So if we switch this back over to the edit page, this is her over this orange. Okay. Now back in fusion, we want to actually put a background behind her and not this orange. But I'm gonna leave this background because it's setting the size of the composition. The very most background layer, like the most background node in Fusion sets the composition size, okay? I know it's kind of weird, but that's how it works, okay? Would you make the media in the background image? Um, you don't have to. Really, this media in two, this is the same kind of thing. This is just a different resolution image. 
So what we could do is resize and crop this. It's just a lot more work than just over, than just putting it over a background. So I can take the output of this and merge it over our background. That'll make a merge. And now we have basically three layers going on, okay? We have our orange background. And then on top of that, we're putting our uh, still. And then on top of that, we're putting our green screen footage with the green screen removed. Does that make sense so far? Edit page is limited. If you want anything nice, you need Fusion. Edit page is quick, quick and dirty step. Yep, exactly. How are you zooming into the app so fast? It's with a, uh, a utility called Glass Brick, I think. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Glass Brick. Yep, it's for Windows. It's just a utility. Okay. So that's what we're doing. Now, um, since we're trying to understand nodes here and not necessarily make the world's best uh, green screen, um, what would we do? How would we do this? Um, it, if we wanted to, if we wanted to move this background, the the uh, the picture in the background, if we wanted to move that around, what would we do? How would how would we do this? What's up, AGR? Thank you so much for being here, bro. A thousand thank yous. Hey, glad you're here. Just got here. I appreciate the tutorials you put out. Your channel is one of my faves for learning DaVinci. That's awesome. Merge two node. Yep. Yep. You can grab it in the merge node for sure. So you can select the merge node and you can grab this little um, widget here for the center and you can move this around, right? So that's an easy way to do it. So we might want to do something like, mm, I don't know, maybe something like that. Maybe it's a little bit more realistic. Of course, we're not going to quite match the perspective and all that stuff, but whatever. There it is. Okay. Where do you get quality green screen picks? I don't know. Let me know. <laughs> do you use templates in Fusion? Um, not very often. So if you make changes on a merge node in Inspector, does that only affect the foreground node? Yes, generally, yeah. It, it pretty much just affects how the foreground is put over the background. You don't have a lot of control over the background, okay? Um, so a, a probably better way to do this rather than moving it in the merge node is to use a transform node, okay? The major reason for that uh, one of the major reasons for that is so that you can see that you're doing things here by looking at the nodes. That's the other major advantage of nodes is you can see everything that's happening all on one kind of big map, right? It's all kind of laid out on a table rather than having a stack of layers and the effects and the masks and everything are hidden inside each layer and you have to twirl them down to figure out what everything is, right? Um, with nodes, everything's kind of laid out so you can see what's happening. You have the map of the world, okay? So thinking about it that way, it might be a better idea, even though it's kind of the same thing, it might be a better idea to reset this merge node and make a node in between our media two, our media in, which let's let's rename this. This is gonna be called the picture, or I'll say photo, and our merge two. And we're gonna add a transform node, which is this node right here. I'll drag this down in between. When it turns blue, I'll let go. I'll make sure this is connected by moving it back and forth. And now I can control that. I can do the same thing in the in the transform node. The difference is that one, I can see that there's a transform node there and I know that I'm affecting this before it gets merged rather than it's being hidden in the merge controls. The other thing is I can disable this really easily and see the difference that that adjustment is making. It's kind of a similar reason why you would split out nodes um, into different jobs in the color page, right? Hey, you're welcome, Planted NPR. All right, Ham Radio, take it easy. When's my next live stream? Mm, not sure on that. I don't know. Difference between transform and transform XF node? Uh, transform is an effect, I believe. I believe that's an open effect. I'm not sure if that's true. 
Transform XF is what you want in Fusion. I think Transform... Well, let's look at it. Yeah. So this Transform node, this is something that you can um, add like in the edit page and stuff. It's not like a Fusion effect. And so it's things where you can position it and you can position things and zoom them, but it's based on... Um, it's kind of a more general thing, and it's not really designed for fusion. You could totally use it, but just use the XF one. That one's kind of designed, okay? Designed for fusion. Just want to stop by and say thank you for making my switch to Adobe to DaVinci easy and not scary. I could just not stand the random crashes and need an alternative. Resolve rocks. Hey, you're welcome, Matthew. Thank you so much for being here. Appreciate that. That's cool. Best way to stop a node functioning just as it would be a five second layer. I'm not sure what that means. I'm sorry. Are you saying how do you make a node last for five seconds? Delta tier here has a garbage mat input. Yep, it does. There's a lot of different inputs that we could get into with the Delta Kier. Solid mat, effect mask, garbage mat, clean plate. Clean plate's really cool too. That's again, that's beyond stuff. Light wrap. Uh, there isn't a um, like an effect for light wrap uh, that's built in. There's some stuff like that people have built for Fusion. Um, there's ways to do it, but it's not like a really easy effect as far as I know. Is there equivalent to a puppet tool in Resolve? Uh, yes, it's called Warper, which I just now discovered is actually on my system. I thought it was gone. I couldn't find it for a while. Maybe it's a Resolve... 18 updated bug or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Clean plate sounds awesome. Yeah, it's it's actually really cool um, the way that it does it, which we might be able to get into in a second. I get to show how to work with the keyframe window. Yeah, we should do that. But does what's happening right here make sense? Again, this, this live stream is focused on helping the noobs who don't understand nodes to understand nodes and be able to read them, okay? So, you noobs who were not, who didn't understand fusion, does this make sense or are there things that don't make sense still? If there's things that don't make sense, I want to talk about it. Okay. Do I work for black magic? Nope. My own thing. Okay. Does this make sense how this works? I should rename this. Underscore MI. This is going to be our green screen. MI for media in. I'm a noob and I say yes, it's very clear. Awesome. Transform is best practice so you can see what's happening putting versus putting the transform in the merge node. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, if you're doing something just for yourself real quick and it's like quick and dirty kind of thing, there's nothing wrong with doing it in the merge node. It's just it's just nice to have this as a separate thing. If I was a fusion expert, I could ditch After Effects, or do we still need to use both? Um, I used After Effects every day for like eight years, and I haven't opened After Effects since. I use every I do everything in Fusion. Yep. I'm watching this because I'm editing my first vid, but it's creating proxy media. Mm-hmm. Yep takes a little bit but it's worth it can you select my color and say hey change the color of her robe and hat yes you can do that um that's something you'd probably do in the color page generally um but you can you can do that in fusion too you build a light wrap but it's not that complicated but you can get more fancy if you want yep exactly why is solid color in the edit page don't show up in the fusion page not showing as media? Yeah, that's because it's a generated effect in the fusion page or in the edit page and you need to make it into footage in order to bring it into um, the fusion page. So like what he's asking is, so like this happens with text too. It's kind of the same thing, right? So like, let's just grab color. Okay, solid color like this. If you're over this color, let's make it not black so it's not confusing, right? Let's make it this really strange color. If we switch to the fusion page like this, it doesn't work. In fact, it might 
Is it crashing? What's it? What's happening? <laughs> oh, it just, yeah, it just like went to my, my next um, clip here. So it's, it's having troubles, right? So what we have to do is select that solid color, right click and say new compound clip. And what that does is it treats it like footage instead of a generated effect. And now if we go into fusion, it will bring it in as footage. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you use the studio version? Yes, I do. But you can use the free version for everything that we're doing today. I just use the studio version because it's, it runs faster, basically. I discovered sticky notes to help me remind me. Yes, those are so good. So good. Got a client about to arrive. All right, Brad, take it easy. I'm confused about something. What's the difference between effects and open effects and infusion? Can you put anything in it? So open effects is like designed for even stuff in the edit page. So like, okay, so I don't know this parrot thing, let's say under open effects, there's all kinds of effects that I can add here in the edit page. And those are designed kind of to be a general thing. All right. Whereas in the Fusion page, there are tools that are kind of designed to work in Fusion. You can use OpenFX in Fusion. Some people do that a lot. Um, I generally try and stay with the things that are built for Fusion in Fusion if there's two things that do the same thing. It might not make a practical difference that much. That's just kind of my practice. So I don't know. You'd have to test them, I guess, to, to really see what... I'm sure the I'm sure the nerds at Blackmagic can tell you exactly the difference and why you would use one versus the other. I'm sure there's all kinds of um, memory and GPU reasons. <laughs> On real jobs, what do you use Fusion for the most? Um, a lot of um, animation, like um, motion graphics, lower thirds, that kind of stuff, um, quick VFX, muzzle flashes, adding fog. Those are like a lot of stuff I use it for. Was the opposite of sequence layers in After Effects inside Fusion? Opposite of sequence. I, I'm not sure. I don't remember what that is. It's been a while since I've used After Effects. <laughs> can you use power bins with Fusion stuff for repetitive projects? Yes, you can. I haven't done that for quite a while, so I'm not really sure how well that works. I've heard that there's problems with that sometimes. But I don't know. I'm not sure on that one. I I would have to like look into that a little more. Has Black Magic ever sponsored you? Uh, yes. Yeah. Well, I've done quite a few little things with Black Magic. It's been been cool. They're actually sponsoring ResolveCon. Hey, did you guys know? Did you guys know that we are doing a super cool event in October, October first and second? Okay. October 1st and 2nd, we are doing a live stream right here on the channel. So if you're watching this, you know how to get to it. All right. Make sure you're subscribed so that you get reminded. But we are having a bunch of Resolve YouTubers out here where I live. And we're going to do a big stream together for two days. And we're going to go over all kinds of cool stuff in Resolve. There's going to be giveaways. There's going to be prizes. There's going to be all kinds of cool stuff. Okay, resolvecon.com, or you can click the link in the, uh, I almost said description, but it's the chat. We also have a few more spots left if you want to come out here to Oregon. If you want to come out here and meet me and meet the other YouTubers who are much more awesome, if you want to come hang out, you should come hang out. You should come hang out. It's going to be really cool. Nope, doesn't require any prior knowledge. It can be you can be the noobest noob. You can be the the newest person to resolve. You could literally sign out of Premiere, having never opened Resolve, and show up at ResolveCon and be cool. Is it Oregon anywhere close to Portugal? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. <laughs> okay. So make sure not to sleep on that, you guys. It's really, really cool. Okay. How do you control when they start or at which frame? Okay, um, so if you have multiple clips. So this is a part 
infusion that in my opinion needs a little work, <laughs> but you can do it. Um, up here in the upper right, you can click on the keyframes button right here and this will open up the keyframes panel. This looks suspiciously like a layer stack, but it's actually not. Um, this has nothing to do with what is on top of anything else. Um, this is just a list of things and uh, the ins and outs of all of them. Okay. So if I want this video or if I want this background to come in later, I can trim this. And now before, beforehand it's orange and then I can have that come in like that. So it's like a little editor here that you can use in result or in uh, the fusion page. I say it needs a little work because it's kind of buggy in my experience. So if you're gonna do something like grab this and move this back and forth, and uh, of course it won't do it now, but um, sometimes <laughs> it will um, kind of flip out and you won't know where it went and it'll fly into Narnia real quick. Just hit control Z and try again. Sometimes it takes a couple things. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you have to adjust it a little bit, but that's how you do it inside of, uh, inside of fusion. If you have, uh, somebody was talking about, uh, keyframes. So let's say, let's, let's, let's go to a different thing here. Let's just, I don't know. Look, there's a cat. That's nice. Let's work on the cat. Okay. <laughs> let's work on the cat. Okay. Buggy only in 18. No, it's been buggy for a while. Sorry if anybody from Black Magic is watching this. I love you guys. And I know I should have been more vocal and complained more, but it's kind of buggy. Oh, it it helped good. That's great. Ariel, I love that. Non-scientific answer, but do you see more and more people switching to resolve as time passes? Mm-hmm. Yep. For sure. For sure. Can you tell me about particles in fusion? Um, that's probably beyond what we're going to talk about today. Um, but the particle system in fusion is pretty cool. It, it's, uh, it, you can get pretty deep with it. Okay. So this media in, um, for, in, to start out with, this is, uh, 5,000 wide by like 8,000 high. Okay. So this is a vertical image. And if we want to put this and kind of control this, of uh, how it, how it shows up in a normal, um, human 16 by nine, um, you know, God fearing video, <laughs> then we can, we can start with a background. Remember that's going to set our composition size and I can connect it to the media out. And by default, it's going to make the background. <laughs> it's going to set the background here. So let's go to image, turn off audio resolution and you can see what I'm doing here. 1920 by 1080. Okay. So now we have a 1920 by 1080 comp and we can merge our media in over that. And then we can add a transform node in between that we can size it down, move it around that kind of thing. Right. Again, for um, node noobs. <laughs> Does this make sense? What we're doing? Is there anything that's confusing about this? I know resizing the background was kind of jank, but besides that, I know you can track titles and stills to a moving objects. People, can you track another piece of video to move? Absolutely. Yeah. It's the same process. Yep. Are there any advantages or reasons to using surface tracker and fusion versus color? Um, yeah, I mean, the things that you can connect to the surface tracker, you have a lot more, um, you have a lot more, it's a lot easier to do, basically. If you're gonna put like a logo on a t-shirt, it's a lot easier to bring a logo into Fusion and play with it than it would be in the color page because you have to bring in a mat and it's kind of strange. It's kind of a weird thing to use that in the color page, actually. Am I talking about expressions? Ooh, um, I can real quick, yeah. Why not scale the image down instead of adding the transform node? Um, you could, 
it's kind of depending on what you want to do. Um, this way, it's not resampling the image. Um, it's just taking the full resolution image and it's just sizing it to way that we want. Whereas if you were going to like resize, I know it's kind of confusing when you resize an image, um, it's like you're converting it to a lower resolution image before you bring it, before you do stuff with it. And so it's just kind of a higher, like quality way of doing it. If I'm not mistaken, why would you use transform node when you can do the same in the same node? You could do that in the merge node. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Like this? The reason you do it in a transform node is so that you can see it in the map of the nodes here. So you can see that you're transforming it before you merge it instead of having this, um, this adjustment hidden in the merge. Because nodes are all about seeing everything all at once, right? Seeing everything that you're doing. So it kind of just goes along with that. You could totally do it in the merge node. It wouldn't be that big a deal. But that's that's the reason. You saw my major issues, solid color. Thanks for trying to solve in real time. Google gives me paranoia. Awesome. When Since switching to Resolve, what would you say has been the biggest setback of any of it all? All right, so I know this is gonna come across as um, fanboy and I know that I'm biased because I do a resolve channel. Okay. I know that just for some perspective. Um, I used final cut pro six or five when I started editing, um, that and Sony Vegas. Then I switched to final cut six, final cut seven. Um, and then once Adobe like CS four, five came out, we switched all the way like to editing in Premiere and doing stuff in After Effects. I'd been using After Effects for quite a while. Um, I was using After Effects and then round tripping to Final Cut Pro for a while, for a long time. Um, and it was kind of to the point where like it, it was laughable for anyone to use anything other than Premiere in, in my opinion. Um, laughable for anybody to use anything other than after effects in my opinion for for quite a while right um and that was that was working daily on lots of edits we were working for a reality show at the time um lots of comp lots of compositing lots of um motion graphics lots of color correction all of that stuff was happening inside of premiere um and then I switched over to Resolve to start doing color. And that's around the time I started doing tutorials on color on in Resolve. It was laughable to edit in anything other than Premiere until Resolve started doing editing. And then even the first year, like the first, the first time that they had editing in Resolve, it was still kind of like, yeah, I guess you could do that, but why? <laughs> like it was, it was like, why would you do that? And then eventually it got to the point where it's just like, dang, it's really, really good. It's really good. Um, and so now it's like, and so I ended up switching cause I was editing my resolve tutorials in premiere for quite a while. Um, but, uh, I, I think it was like resolve. What was it? 12, 12 or 13 or something. I forget when, when they started doing the edit. Um, then I switched over to Resolve and closed Premiere. Like I literally like closed Premiere and just started using Resolve. And one day I had to open up Premiere again. And I was like, oh yeah, um, I'll just open up this old file in Premiere. And it said last access 300 days ago. And I'm like, <laughs> so I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, I didn't really notice a big difference, um, at least in editing. Um, Fusion took some getting used to, being used to After Effects. There's a few things in After Effects that um, I miss, like Roto Brush was awesome. Um, the, there's a lot of templates and presets. Uh, there's like scripts and everything that are really great. But honestly, there's a lot of templates, presets, and scripts that are available for Fusion now that are just awesome. Just awesome. So it's, it's kind of one of those things where after I used fusion for a little bit, it clicked in my mind. 
from like, this is dumb. Like I was putting things together. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm just doing tutorials because this is in Resolve now. And I guess I'll learn it. And then one day I was just like, hold on. Like I can use a node and connect it to multiple things and then reuse that and then put those all together as its own, um, you know, mat and then composite things with that, like without having to pre-comp stuff, without having to link stuff, without having to duplicate multiple layers. And I'm like, dang, this is a freaking genius way to work. This is a genius way to work. And so like, like I said, I mean, started using resolve and it's like man i don't know i just it was not that big of a deal for me you know for editing it wasn't a big deal at all it, it's the same thing and after effects versus fusion was a bigger deal but still eh, like i didn't really see that it wasn't that bad you know i'm sure it depends on what kind of work you're doing you know Okay, so yeah, you can also do paste instance. Yeah, paste instance is great. New editor made maybe five videos in Premiere Pro. Where would you start in DaVinci? Um, I would start in the edit page because the edit page is basically Premiere Pro. So check this out. I'll reset the UI. If you've used Premiere, this should look pretty familiar. Does this look familiar? It's um, it's really, really intuitive. Like, just like you would edit something in Premiere, you double click on a piece of footage, you set your in and your out, by hitting I and O, you can drag this into the timeline. You can make your edits in the timeline. I mean, it works the same way. You put audio, you put music under here in the audio tracks. If you want to adjust something, you can select that clip and go up here to the inspector. And this is basically your effect controls and you can zoom things, position them, whatever you can adjust volume, all that stuff. And I mean, that's, I mean, there's effects. If we go over to the effects panel, open this up, I can grab a title, drag this in. Here's text. If I want to blur it, I can grab something like a lens blur, add some blur. If I want to affect this, if I want to change this effect, I can select it right here, go up to the inspector and go to the effects and I can adjust the blur size like this. It basically works like Premiere does. So, you know, it like, for me, it just was not even kind of a big deal to switch over. I was like, oh, this is the same program. Cool. Like that's literally all I thought about. Like that's about what I picked up. I was like, oh yeah. Okay. You can essentially skip the cut page altogether. Yep, totally can. Tried After Effects once or twice, felt old when I was using it. I understand what you mean. Do you use Reactor? A little bit, a little bit. I've done a few things in Reactor uh, or, or with the Reactor plugin and stuff. Reactor is like a, uh, it's, it's like an open, um, it's kind of like a plugin market for fusion and people can make uh, plugins and scripts and stuff to help with, with things pretty neat. I'm not quite sure what the cut pages purpose is. It's for certain workflows. I actually have a video on the cut page, but it's really designed to move really quickly. So like the edit page or the cut page is designed to where, like if you're going to put together an edit really quickly, you don't have to zoom in and out of the timeline. You can just like, if you want to go to the middle of the timeline, you just click in the middle of the upper timeline. If you want to go to the end, you click on the end. If you want to adjust something, you don't have to zoom in or out, right? You can just grab it down here in the zoomed in view and change things around, right? Um, you can grab all of your footage all at once with this little button right here, source tape, and it'll put all of your footage end to end and you can scrub through all your footage all at once, set ins and outs, drag this down, and you can make edits very, very quickly. This is like designed for people who do like vlogs or like news, things that you have to like throw a bunch of stuff in the timeline as fast as you can, put it together and make a story and render it. That's what it's for. So if you're not doing that, if you're doing like a, a uh, feature film that you're gonna spend months on, maybe not, Maybe not the best application, just stay in the edit page. You know what I mean? 
I don't think pluralize works properly with resolve, does it? Uh, not in my experience. There, there are things. Um, there are ways that you can do it. It's not as great as like Premiere. That that's that is totally a thing. But there are some really cool ways to um, sync audio in Resolve that are pretty good. They're not quite as amazing as Pluralize, but they're pretty good. In fact, like what you can do is you can, I don't have audio and video right here, but you can select like, let's say this is the audio and shift select the video and right click. And you can sync the clips together, sync the audio to the video, and you can have it do it in the background and it will replace the audio track the bad audio track from your camera with the good audio track that you recorded and it keeps it with the clip so that you can grab that clip and drag it down 50 times and it's already connected to that good audio which is just really a nice way to work i like i like working that way it's really nice and then you don't have to have everything in the timeline and then copy and paste them from the timeline right yeah good for initial rough cut yeah that's great for the cut page mm -hmm. that's what i do I, and i usually like seek b-roll and stuff find b-roll that way too All right. Hey guys, I got to run. I, I know I would love to hang out some more, but uh, I do have to go because it's uh, it's getting getting later in the afternoon here for me. So um, thank you so much to everyone who hung out. Thank you for um, all your questions and everything with Fusion. Um, I hope that this helps you understand the Fusion nodes a little more. Um, and I hope that this kind of clarifies some things. If you do need more help with Fusion Nodes, uh, you can, I have a lot of videos on Fusion Nodes. I have one, um, the thumbnail says, finally learn Fusion. And it breaks all, basically all that I talked about down here in a little bit more concise way with some examples. Uh, so check that out. We're also, this is a secret. Don't tell anybody, this is a secret. We're also working on some Fusion training very soon. Won't be for a little bit because we wanna make it really good but we'll have a fusion course here after after not too long, okay? All right. Hey, thank you guys for hanging with me. Really appreciate you. Thank you for all your subs and all your um, support. It really means a lot to us here at Release the Hound Studios and at Ground Control. Thank you. Thank you for hanging, all right? You guys are the best. All right, I'll catch you later. Bye now, bye-bye, bye-bye now, bye-bye, bye-bye. Bye!